Hi, I'm Roger Pressman, and I'll be your guide as you begin your journey through EvanX University. Our goal is to help you learn about electric vehicles, EVs as they're called, by presenting a series of mini courses that touch on a variety of important aspects of EVs. So let's begin. It might seem odd to begin a curriculum about electric vehicles by talking about the internal combustion engine often referred to as ICE or ICE. But somehow the image on your screen seems appropriate. Conventional 20th century ICE vehicles are familiar. They represent 99% of the automotive marketplace worldwide. Even if you're only in your mid-20s, it's likely that you've been driving an ICE car for more than a decade and doing it without giving a second thought to the technology under the hood. To be sure, the internal combustion engine has improved dramatically in the past half century. Better reliability, better fuel economy, lower emissions, and that's all good. But EVs are coming on, and recent advances in battery technology, along with new manufacturing techniques and an emphasis on environmentally friendly vehicles, have opened the door for electric vehicles. If you believe some of the negative hype that's out there, EVs are unproven, they're scary, they have too little range, and are really nothing more than a golf cart. They're simply too different. Until quite recently, too many people visualize something like the picture on your screen when the phrase electric vehicle was mentioned. We were told EVs simply can't compete against ICE vehicles. But is any of that true? Let's see. EVs are new tech, right? Well, not really. EVs are high tech, but they're hardly new. It might surprise you to learn that EVs have been around for over a hundred years. Here's what Wikipedia has to say about EVs. EVs were among the earliest automobiles. In the early 1900s, EVs held most speed and distance records. And at one point in history, EVs outsold gasoline-powered vehicles. In fact, in 1900, 28% of the cars on the road in the USA were electric. But by the 1920s, EVs had faded. Why did ICE cars win out? As roads improved, people wanted to drive further and EVs didn't have the range that people wanted. The discovery of oil reserves in Texas, Oklahoma, and California made gasoline cheap and ICE vehicles cheaper to operate. Surprisingly, two simple inventions gave ICE vehicles an advantage. The invention of the electric starter eliminated the need for hand-cranking ICE cars, a dangerous and difficult maneuver at that time. And the invention of the muffler helped reduce the deafening noise of early ICE cars. Finally, mass production of ICE vehicles by Henry Ford in 1913 gave ICE cars a price advantage. So EVs were big a hundred years ago and now they're trying to be big again. One thing was absolutely true in 1910 and continues to be true today. Electric vehicles are considerably simpler than ICE vehicles. In essence, the EV is composed of four major components, a battery, always re rechargeable, and most likely lithium ion, one or more electric motors, control electronics that pass the power stored in the battery to the electric motor, and something called regenerative braking, a way to recapture energy from the motion of the car and use it to recharge the battery. It's really a very simple system, especially when you compare it to an ICE vehicle. Think about ICE for a moment. What's missing? There are a lot of things that are missing when you compare an EV to an ICE car. In an EV, there is no crankshaft, pistons, cylinders, connecting rods, fuel injection system, exhaust system, transmission, radiator, alternator, oil pump, timing. The list is long. There are also far fewer consumables. There are no belts, engine oil, oil filter, antifreeze, or air filter. 
In fact, for some EVs, the only consumable is your windshield washer fluid, and the only replaceable parts are your windshield wipers and tires. <clears throat> the stuff that's missing from an EV indicates one very important thing. EVs are simple, and simple is good. Fewer parts means fewer things that can, can break. Fewer consumables means less continuing expense. But in addition to simplicity, you get more, not less, convenience. You fill your EV at home, at night, while you're sleeping. It's full every morning, every day. No more stops at the filling station. You also get energy efficiency, meaning lower fueling costs, a lot lower, and an environmentally friendly vehicle. And that means zero emissions. It's a proven technology not scary at all. There's much, much more to say about EVs, but we've done enough for a brief introduction. We hope you'll explore other EVU mini courses. Like this one, they're short and to the point, focused on a specific aspect of EVs. If you spend just a little time, you'll be better able to understand and evaluate EVs and ultimately purchase an electric vehicle if you don't already own one. But before we finish this mini course, let's summarize. EVs introduce a new jargon and some new ideas, but they actually aren't new. They were the dominant vehicle 100 years ago, and today they're beginning to challenge ICE cars yet again. They're compelling because they're simple. And as Leonardo said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Thanks for spending your time. We hope to see you in our other EVU mini courses.